The title isn't clickbait. The French genuinely thought that potatoes gave you leprosy. Time for a quick history lesson. In 1778, a decade before the French Revolution, France was suffering from widespread famine. The country was desperate for a solution. One of the few viable crops they had were potatoes. But potatoes were mostly used for pig feed, as they'd actually been outlawed for human consumption due to the misconception that they gave the eater leprosy. Enter Antoine Augustin Parmentier. Parmentier was a French scientist who had already learned the harmlessness of a potato-based diet in a Prussian prison during the Seven Years' War. So, Parmentier moved to Paris and began a three-step PR campaign to rebrand the potato for the starving French masses. Step one, he gave bouquets made from potato flowers and blossoms to Queen Marie Antoinette. Step two, she and King Louis were so receptive to this that they gifted Parmentier some land to grow potatoes in the garden of the Palace of the Tuileries. So Parmentier realised that to make the crop seem special rather than just tolerable. As a ruse, he had the plot heavily guarded during the daytime to make them seem valuable, but ensured there was no security at night, meaning the public could sneak in and steal what they assumed would be a precious crop for the aristocratic classes. Step 3. He developed recipes that centred around potatoes, and luckily, in 1778, none other than Benjamin Franklin got involved. Franklin found himself in France trying to drum up French support for American independence, and was sent a sample of Parmentier's potato bread by a mutual friend. So Franklin suggested that Parmentier hosted a banquet with potatoes featured on every course. Parmentier loved the idea, invited Franklin as the guest of honour, and devised a menu that we're going to sample now. Okay, so the first step is to take five pounds of potato pulp and starch and mix it together. I'm going to quarter it and do 500 grams of potato pulp and flour each. This is a julienne peeler, not good. I've lost my peeler. So I'm now going to boil these for about 15 minutes until they're really falling apart. To create potato pulp, I'm going to pass them through a ricer. So I'm going to leave this to cool for a few minutes now. So at this point, the recipe really helpfully gives you some instructions from the night before and asks you to dissolve some yeast in warm water. So I'm going to skip that step thanks to the invention of fast-acting yeast. I'm going to add four tablespoons of sugar, give the yeast something to chew on. To this mix, I'm going to add 30 grams of dried yeast. Okay, so I'm now going to let that sit for 15 minutes. We have a really angry, yeasty cappuccino. I'm adding 500 grams of potato flour. And you're adding all of these ingredients to your very historically accurate stand mixing bowl. Yeah, this is cheating. I don't care. Okay. Your bowl is going down. Well, oh, thank you. It is starting to come together in something that does mostly resemble a dough. It does definitely have that mashed potato -y feel to it. Or just blame the French. Blame the French. I mean, they thought potatoes would give you leprosy. What else have they done? They did give us croissants. They didn't, actually. They're actually Austrian. They used to be called the Kipferl. I'm fairly sure Marie Antoinette brought them with her to the court of France. They were essentially an Austrian pastry that they, would, they developed to uh, commemorate victory against the Ottoman Empire. That's why a croissant crescent is supposed to be shaped like the Islamic moon. Well, then the French were also thieves. <laughs> now I'm going to set this aside overnight. I feel like this is where I should do some kind of snazzy transition into daytime. I go. Didn't I have sleeves before? For bread, that is essentially half dough, half mashed potato. I would say that's a good rate of rise. So now we've done our proofing. The recipe calls for us to add equal parts of potato flour, pulp, and water. Once again, I'm going to layer out some boiled potatoes. 500 grams of potato starch. So now we need to add an equal fifth part of water. Pushing your hand through <laughs> mashed potato. My dog got a bit overexcited. I have no idea what an 18th century oven was like in terms of heat. But I'm going to put this in at 117, start off with 45 minutes. Quite a square loaf, isn't it? It is, but I mean, that's a good inch, two inches rise on it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I actually need a saw. I'm not sure if you can really tell from this. But on the inside, we actually have um, glue. And it's really interesting, actually, that where I thought we had a nice rise, there is just kind of a, a big <laughs> bubbly cavity at the big top. Um, I'm going to try a bit of the crust, actually, because it's all going. <gasps> this is a bit of a disaster. Looking through some of the meals that he served at those banquets, the thing that really caught my eye was pomme de poisson. 
which from what I can work out is essentially mashed potato sculpted into a fish, which really intrigues me because when you're trying to convince someone that food isn't poisonous, carving it into the shape of an animal is pretty much what I would do for my child. Anyone who saw my Elizabethan fish episode will know that crafting is not my strong suit. So in concocting this fish, I'm turning to a prop. This calls for a lot of mashed potato. Now we have our mashed potato, we need to add a few things. We need to add butter, three tablespoons, pepper, and a tablespoon of crushed anchovies. Ugh. Not a fan? Nope. And this is really calling out for some salt and some cream, I think. Precision, I find, is key when you are dressing a mashed potato fish with heat and egg. Now I need to bake this for 20 to 30 minutes. Don't have any parsley, but I think we can all agree that the lemon really adds a certain je ne sais quoi to this. I'm not sure about you, but if I was starving and I saw this, I would think that's worth the risk of leprosy. Do I start with the head or the tail? In the toss up between heads and tails, I think let's go for tails. It smells like bubble and squeak. It is what it is. It's mashed potato that's been shaped into a fish. Does it taste fishy with the anchovies? You get, it's kind of like a Caesar salad dressing. You get a little hint of a slight fishiness, but it's more about the seasoning. We're not quite at uh, pom frites territory yet, but that's a really lovely sort of just baked, kind of crispy potato -y edge to it. <laughs> they move from potential leprosy to potential constipation. <laughs> it's not the worst potato I've ever eaten in my life. I take great comfort in that. Thank you. Thanks so much for watching. If there's a meal or moment from history you'd like me to recreate, then let me know in the comments and do consider subscribing. I make one of these dumb things every two weeks.